Okay, so let's look at this picture. It's a beautiful picture. Uh, I am not, but okay, you can keep looking at it and listen to me. All right, so I will talk about photography and then with photography, I'll talk about perspe perspective because it's important, right? And why perspective? Because through the span of time where I started photography, perspective built on. All right, so the story starts from 90s. There was this two-year-old kid who was playing on the rooftop with his cousin on a go-kart. You know the small cars kids play on? So yeah, he was playing on that and with his cousin pushing him from the back and the next moment was curious because the kid was excited and they did not know where they were heading to and suddenly there was a push and the child fell down from the stairs, top, top, that happened, he got unconscious, parents got worried, they got him to the hospital, they rushed him to the hospital and got to know the kid has gone squint from one eye and he has lost vision in that from one eye. Now, moving forward, there was this kid who lost one eye. Now, this picture speaks more than that because it is a story related to me very strongly because he lost more than that. Right, so this picture is from Kiwai, and Kiwai is a small village when you are in Naran region, you're going up to Shukran, right? So there is this waterfall, it's a very famous waterfall, and it's, the story goes back to 2013. I was traveling with a friend of mine and discovering the whole of Pakistan. So yeah, I was doing that, and in that span of time, I saw this waterfall, and after taking picture of this waterfall, I was looking for a place to stay. Now, looking for a place to stay, I find this guy a very weird guy. By saying very weird, I mean very weird. Because his appearance was weird. How was it? He was wearing a dirty shalwar kameez. His beard was unmade. He had a messy hair. He had dark circles around his eyes. And he had red eyes. Now, that was weird. Why? Because I had the association because I am from Karachi and being from Karachi, trust me, I have lost 11 phones with that appearance when that appearance came to me, right? On gunpoint, I lost that, right? 11 phones. So yeah, he was weird for me. Now I asked him, hey, do we have a place to stay? And he said, uh, no, go find any hotels. Like, no, we don't have any hotels and we don't want to stay in any hotels. Uh, tell us where we can stay, you know? He said, I have, I have a place for you guys to stay. All right, show us. He goes, he enters a newly made house and he says it's a guest house. When we go in, we can freshly smell the paint and there was no furniture. Now the weird thing comes in again. All right, there's no furniture. And then uh, I had this camera. So newly, uh, actually I took it from a friend and I was carrying it. So. When we went in and I asked him, hey, like, how will we stay here? He's like, we, I'm going to get you the mattresses and go, you guys can stay there. I was like, okay, perfect, amazing, right? So we settled down. He came back after a while. This time he asks, hey, how expensive is that camera? I was like, uh, why do you ask? It's expensive. Yeah, it will be expensive. And he goes out again. Second time he comes in, he questions me. Hey, my, me and my friend were there, he, hey, do you guys smoke up? I was like, uh, no, thank you, you can go. He went out. I looked at my friend, my friend looked back at me and he was like, oh, bro, let's go. I was like, bro, it's night time, we can't go anywhere. I think he's going to, you know, drug us and we'll make us sleepy and drowsy and we'll find nowhere in the waterfall, we don't know, let's go. I was like, trust me. Nothing will happen. Third time the guy comes in. He comes in, this time I question him. I was like, hey, so let me ask you a question. Tell me about yourself. He said, okay, I'm 18 years old. I was like, 18 years old? Man, just look at you. You look like a 35 year old man. What happened? Some, what happened in your life? Did someone leave you? He's like, yes. And I had a grin on my face. Like, okay, tell me who left me? Because I had that urban mentality that, you know, Love and all, so yeah, I asked him, who left you? Any loved one left you? Like, yeah, do you remember 2005? 
I was like, yes. Do you remember an earthquake? I was like, yes. I lost my father and four brothers in that earthquake. And my grin was slowly down. I was like, whoa, what did I do? And then the next question I did not know what to ask. So I asked, okay, so where are they? He pointed out towards these. He said, they are the graves. There they are. So yeah, that was the point my perspective changed to life. That was the point where I started believing that yes, someone who looked different might not be the person we think he is or that she is. Why? Because appearance should not be the reason to you know, judge anyone. Perspective changes, right? So moving forward, this is from Kashmir. In May, I went to Kashmir and when I say Kashmir, I get this one feeling which is paradise. Right, because I associate Kashmir with paradise. Why? Because this is picture from Arankel. We had an amazing experience and we came back from Arankel, we a group of 85. Right, now in that group of 85, we were the first ones, me and my three friends, four friends, we were the first one to cross the small chair lift because 85 people took time to come back. So we came back and we were waiting at Kale. Now we are waiting at Kale and we have this Bibi Sobia and her young cousins and brothers and sisters, Kashmiri kids sitting beside us and, you know, started staring at us because we from Karachi were wearing pant shirts, including girls, and they're like staring at them. So we thought that, okay, we'll talk to these people, right? So I started a conversation. I was like, okay, tell us about yourself. She said, I'm Bibi Sobia. I'm 12 years old. Okay, so what do you do? I do nothing. No, she was very cute, right? When I say very cute, she was very cute, right? So she said, okay, uh, what did you see in Kashmir? What did you do in Kashmir? So we were having a fun, fun time. So like, you know, first we went to Kutan. What we did there, we had food. Then, you know, we went to Sharda, we had food. Then we went to Keren, we had food. Then we went to Arankel, we had food. Now we are in Kel, what do you think we'll do? She was just looking at us, she's like, I don't know. I'm like, obviously we'll have food. Now there was this nine-year-old, her sister, she was there sitting there. She whispered something in her ear. I was curious, so, and she sent her somewhere. So I, I saw that and I asked, okay, where did you send her? She, she said that she went to fetch her cows because you know, our cows are roaming around in the streets of Kashmir and our parents don't like that. So yeah, I was like, okay. I'll take that. Now, after a while, she comes back with a small shopping bag, rolled in a stone manner, right? And uh, she gave it to her with a water bottle and quickly sneaked it in. And then she poured it forward to us, like, this is for you. I'm like, what is, what is it? She's like, this is for you, open it. And we opened it. It was a handmade a homemade bhindi with two chapatis, and that was the food I was craving for seven days. <laughs> and when I say Kashmir, I say paradise. And yes, this was a food from paradise. Now moving on, with paradise we relate God. Why? Because you know the mighty and you know believe and everything? Yeah, paradise. And then God. So people say, Ke, uh, God exists, I was like, I, I used to, I still believe that he is. And after the next picture which I show, my belief went very strong. How I did that? Recently in August, I went to Hunza, Duikar, right? Eagle's Nest. It was a sunset time and we were running for the sunset, right? I did not know what that place looked like. I was, I was heavy breathing. I was just trekking up to that point. I reached up there and when I looked up, I was in a shock. Because trust me when I say I met God over there, I met him there. The colors were transforming. Every, the, around me they were like, in 360 degree they were like eight peaks. Peaks including Golden Peak, Altit Peak, the mighty Rakaposhi and the Lady Finger and then eight peaks around me and all of them were golden. And then they were transforming colors from golden to red to pink to violet, to sea green, to blue, the sky was blue, and it was intense. And I was speechless, I was left speechless. And that was the point where my belief in God, you know, became more strong. 
Now this picture is very important to me and this kid is very important to me. He plays a very significant role in my life. How? Because in 2013, no, in 2014, I was for a TCF project. I, I keep on doing projects for TCF. So when I was up in um, Punjab region, in Western Punjab, I met this kid in TCF school. He was a miracle. When I talk about God, I talked about paradise. Now, he was a miracle for me. Why? Because his principal told me when he was in class two, he was a fine kid, right? Fine kid, perfectly able, having both hands, having both legs. He was perfectly able. Then he met an accident. He got electrocuted and he had to lose his hands. He was a success story for me. So he was sitting with me and I asked him, okay, Avest, tell me what do you like doing? And he's like, I love playing cricket. I was like, okay, what in cricket? And he was like, I like doing better, betting. I was like, okay, betting? Can you show it to me? And this kid, with such a smile and confidence, stood up right there and started walking towards the ground. And I was like, hey, stop. Because I was nervous at that time. He might be not. And then I asked his principal, okay, so his principal said, no, don't do this to him. He needs special equipment to hold the bat. And then he can do it. I was like, okay, come back, sit with me. Tell me, how do you want me to take your picture? And he said, I want you to take my picture while writing. <laughs> now, this kid made me believe that, yes, despite having any disabilities, you are still able. Her prince, his principal, his parents worked hard on him. And they made him practice writing like this with a finger attached on his bandage. And he was an inspiration for me. He was someone that changed my mind about life. <laughs> now remember the kid I talked about who was two year old back in 90s, lost an eye? Guys, it was no one, and this is for the very first time I'm telling it on the public forum. It's no one, but this is me, Mustafa Elias. And I have this ability to visualize, I have this ability to see things. Although I cannot see a 3D movie, I cannot, I cannot, with one eye I cannot. But I have the power to visualize and you saw my work and this picture actually made me realize that yes, I can go for photography. Because when I went to IBA, it was my first year and in my first year, I had this manager at IBA Photography Society, Hassan Zubair Bhatti and he actually found the Passion in me said that, yes, you have the skill and I will improve it in you. And he said, okay, there's this competition coming up, Phoenix from this Ashes Karachi, you have to show the positive side of Karachi. And I was like, okay. I rushed on my bicycle from my home to the Hawks Bay because I remember this thing being there. I took this picture against the sunlight because sun was rising up there. And when I came back, I told my mom, she saw me all wet with, with, uh, with, and she was like, hey, where were you? I was like, I went to Hawks Bay. Are you crazy? Why did you go to Hawks Bay? To take that picture. Are you mad? You took such expensive camera on your bicycle. Are you crazy? I was like, yes, mom, it's fine. It's okay, relax. And this picture got third prize in all of Karachi. <laughs> and that was the moment Yes, I thought, yes, I made my mom pr proud because she was the one who supported me. My dad supported me. She, although I come late at home after covering events, but she, she screams at me, hey, why are you late? But on the other hand, she's, she's like, okay, you're working, I'm happy. You're working what you want to do, I'm happy. And that's it, guys. This is Mr. Elias for you. Thank you so much. Love <laughs> is.